Hi, my name is Kim. I'm Chandler. And the movie we decided to review is uh, Coonskin, directed by Ralph Bashihi. <laughs> ba Bakshi. Bakshi, sorry. Bakshi. Bakshi. From and... 1975. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> So just like a really quick summary of the movie. So it starts, well, I guess there's two prisoners. It's like an older guy and a younger guy. And the main story is kind of set up as a story that the older prisoner is telling to the younger guy. Um, and the story is about three brothers, um, Brother Rabbit, Bear, and Preacher Fox, who go from the South and they move to Harlem and they basically take over this huge, like, black gang and kind of uproot the system. There was the song, the song that they play. Oh, yes. So before you even see any characters, you see... It's um Scatman. Scatman Crocus Crothers. Crothers, sorry. Um, and he starts singing this song called I'm the Nigga Man. And so basically I feel like Should we pull up the lyrics? Uh play the song. We're gonna play a little bit of the song. Cause it, the song I think really gets you set up for what you're gonna you're, what you're in for for the whole movie. You get the idea, but I'll read some of the lyrics, so. He says, I'm the minstrel man, cleaning man, pole man, shoeshine man, I'm a nigga man. Uh, watch, <laughs> watch me dance. I've got the devil in me. I've been waiting on the employment line, welfare line, gas line since nine. Now I'm waiting on the pawn shop line. I've got the devil in me. I've been shot on, pushed on, passed on, gassed on, red, white, and blued on. Now I'm waiting to turn on. I've got the devil in me. So what I took from it is, it, again, it sets you up for the whole movie. It kind of talks about some of the stereotypes. Um, black people are forced to deal with, you know, like, him talking about I've been in the welfare line and unemployment unemployment line kind of goes with that stereotype of a oh black people are lazy and just want handouts and stuff like that and then like him he goes on to say he's been stepped on pushed on or oh, red white and blued on kind of how like America has treated the black man and the black community as a whole just stepping on them ever since the get go and so that kind of sets you up for the whole movie yeah the it, the song itself just lets you know that the director is not holding any punches back so if yeah. he's gonna start a song i thought it was a good way to like kind of encompass the disrespect and the downtrodden nature of african americans which is a lot of what the movie is kind of honing in on yeah so like you were saying it sets you up for the the tea that the director is about to spill in the movie mm -hmm. uh, yeah spoiler, spoiler warnings. Warnings. yeah Click away if you don't want spoilers. Go yeah. watch it. It's a crazy movie. So the first one we're going to talk about is the visual character designs and like the type of black people you see depicted in Coonskin. So the right off the uh, right off the bat, you are you all the black people are a lot of them are literally black like i'm talking yeah. black like my hair black like you <laughs> black like if they went into the night scenery you're not seeing I'll, them like, put pictures in of like what these characters look like but they're and it's really jarring to like the first time i looked at the movie i was like I don't know if I can watch this because these characters are cre like they're really creepy to look at. Like it's they're very like grotesque. Right. It's like really dark skin, super fat, like takes yeah. up most of their face, the red lips. And for me it was just like uh reminiscent of like the old super racist Piccaninny cartoons. Mm -hmm. that they used to use in the Yep. And so like their faces are like long and their lips are stuck out and it kinda reminded me of, like an octopus kinda almost the way they go. And all stuff like that, like octopi don't have lips. <laughs> I don't. It reminded me of some sea creature. <laughs> I saw it as him, like kind of using that old, like, cause he uses a lot of old, like, stereotypes throughout the movie, and I kind of feel like he uses it in a way to poke fun and like make you see how ridiculous it is, like, to depict black people in that way, cause, like, I I also kind of grew to like it. I don't know, in a sense. Yeah. I, I hated it the whole time. <laughs> it was awful. I kind of like it made the style like kind of individualistic. Yeah, that's I, like true. I, from an art point standpoint, um, I, I consider myself an art person, and like I like styles that like stand out and you won't see everywhere. And so like 
me seeing that kind of style, like, if I see it again, I must immediately think of Coonskin. So I thought that was interesting. I also thought it was interesting that, I mean, all the black characters look a certain way. And then the first time you see, like, the police officers in the beginning when they're going to the the brothel, Mm -hmm. the police officers, those two, and then there's another police officer later in the film who's corrupt. He's working with the mob. But all the cops look really grotesque. Like, they're disgusting. I feel like he made the people that aren't supposed to be respected in society look grotesque. Yeah. um, Because, I mean, all the police officers, to me, when I first saw them, they look almost like they're, like rotting like they're deteriorating (laughs) they i mean they do and i think that's on purpose because mm -hmm. like the cops are the establishment the man so they're kind of the enemy and (laughs) they do there's a lot of talk or not talk about but um there's a lot of portrayal of like police brutality and harassment against the community members from these gross like monstrous looking police officers so I think that was a really deliberate design choice. Like, everything was, but especially that. Another character that, to me, was, like, again, really specifically, like, drawn a certain way was the... I should have looked up the name. The the Jesus' cousin. Oh, uh, Savior Simple, I think, is his name. Okay, so Savior Simple is a character, and he basically runs this big church sort of establishment in Harlem when they get there. Um... And he's, like, I don't know how to describe him. He's less, like, he's super big and rotund. And And he's always naked, except for this, like, coat. He wears a big coat, (laughs) but then he's uh, completely naked. One thing I feel like we should have warned is, like, Coonskin is, uh, like, real gratuitous. It's graphic. So we should have warned that, but, like, no, it's graphic because, like, uh, Savior, um, who claims to be Jesus' cousin... (laughs) Black Jesus is coming. Jesus you is need cousin. to specify. They say that black Jesus gives black people the strength to kill whites. So that's a very important. That kind of do what kind of movie you're watching? Yeah. But the yeah. So the savior is naked as he preaches, even yeah. which I feel like is kind of like playing towards the church, kind of making fun of them. Mm-hmm. How if that would never go down? Yeah. No. And I think that was. A big commentary on a lot of the other black exploitation films that we've watched. We talked a lot about the portrayal of the black church and preachers in the black church because they're so central to the black community, I think. But because of that, at the same time, it's really easy for authority figures in churches to try and take advantage of the people who are trusting them and like part of their congregation. So I think him being so like grotesque and he's just like a really skeezy character. He's disgusting like he has like women around him and Mm. he's always naked and like talking about money and scheming and he's the one who's initially running this like gang that's associated with like corrupt police officers and like the italian mafia but the fact that he's such an undesirable character (laughs) i think speaks a lot about how the director looks at um leaders of maybe like mega churches specifically in the way that they take advantage of the black community because at one point they're collecting just like tons and tons of money from the congregation and like you said the three main characters who are coming from the south are all like really confused like they're oh like they do this in churches like i don't know this is how churches work and so i think it's an interesting way to talk about like i said people being taken advantage of one thing i thought was interesting like the that he preaches about savior is kind of like uh, I took note of how he kind of promoted blackness. He gave it a, con- a positive connotation. And then, like, one thing that stood out to me is, like, when he talked about whiteness, he, like, he said, he literally says white, white, whiteness is pain. And he gives it this negative connotation. So it's kind of like a twist to, like, in a sense, uplift the black community by da- um, dragging the white community, in a sense. And he even at one point, like, drops down the banners of... It was Elvis, Nixon, and John, John Wayne. And, and starts shooting them. them. So, to move on to a very... She's a very prominent character throughout the film, who we very briefly mentioned earlier. But Miss America is... She's oh this God. whole personified character in the movie. She's tall and beautiful. She's got this perfect hourglass figure, like, huge boobs, wide hips. She has this long blonde hair, Mm -hmm. and she, like, is very innocent. Yeah, she's pale. She's very pure looking. Like, so she's basically America personified. Yeah. And she and the, wears this red, white, and blue, like, right. spangled out. The, the way she treats the black people is definitely <laughs> how America so treats wild. black people. So, um, with her, it's, like, it's obvious 
that like she's America. Like the first thing you see her is um you see this black man trying to hit on her and he he tries to get with her and she literally like she's super tall and then this man is like super He's tiny little. and she like grabs him by the neck and like she I don't know where she gets these like brass <laughs> knuckles from with spikes starts walloping she him. With, so basically Miss America is just like every time you see her she's mistreating the black man. Um and the second time we see her let me see the second time we see her it's the monologue is it no first is the the guy in the black panther and mm, the yes. black activist uh jacket black nationalist one? yeah black nationalist jacket mm -hmm. and he he's like shooting at miss america he's wearing this like black power symbol on his jacket mm -hmm. and he shoots at her until she says like okay 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 you've won you've won and then she she's like Come over here. And so he's like, oh, I come over there. And she, like, you know, spreads her legs all, like, invitingly. And then he's like, so, you know, I mean, it's kind of commenting now, like, May, like maybe the stereotype that oh black men all all black men want white women but he goes to her in her open legs and then like you you see a you see a bang a bullet and he's like he gets <laughs> shot by her vagina and he says oh she has the clap <laughs> that was like my favorite part <laughs> like I literally gasped was like did her vagina just kill him I mean but also if you think about the white female sexuality killing yeah. a black right. woman brings us to her third appearance. Yeah. <laughs> which is the next time, the third time we see her, there is an older man. I think it was the same man who was rummaging through the trash at the beginning. No. But he's reciting the lyrics to the song, the I'm a nigga man. He recites all the lyrics to the song and she's kind of lounging against like a pole near him. And he stops and he looks at her. <laughs> Help! Rape. Rape. <laughs> like, she doesn't even raise her voice and immediately... Yeah, she's, like, smiling. She right. looks beautiful. And literally, immediately, a noose comes and hangs the and man, like, remains. right there. Yeah. And she's just smiling, and she goes along strumming her yeah. guitar. And she picks up guy. her guitar, and she starts, like, playing a pop song. Which I literally... We had to pause the movie because we were so <laughs> shook. <laughs> because, like, obviously, it's a commentary that, like, how white women have gotten men killed over rape accusations... And stuff like that. So mm -hmm. I just really felt like there were literal mobsters and like gangbangers and like pimps in this movie, but I felt like Miss America was the most dangerous. Okay. So I feel like the movie talks a lot about, I mean, it covers a lot of more broad social issues, not necessarily just pertaining to the black community specifically. They also have a, they have a lot to say about, uh, the representation of like queer people and so the way they depict drag queens and gay men is also yeah. there's the first time we see a queer person which is the bar owner there's yes. a bar owner earlier in the film who the corrupt cop goes to the bar madigan madigan goes to the bar <laughs> and this um a drag queen i i would say so yes yeah like, so, the, it's a man, like, he has, like, you know, short skirt, pink on, nail polish on his fingernails, and, like, he kind of comes on to Madigan, and Madigan, like, l physically, like, punches him in the face. Mm -hmm. He's like, get that crap away from me. The way, um, gay men and queer people are depicted in this film, I don't know if it was, like, whether the director viewed them negatively or how or if he was like commentating on how society that. views them yeah. because the next gay man <laughs> we see is uh the mobster's son two sons yes and they're they're in a garbage can and you hear and them it sounds like they're having intercourse yes which i first of all the fact that they're in the garbage can like while we were watching it i like turned to kim and was like why are they in the garbage can and i was like oh you answered your own question okay. So, yeah, uh, so, you know, kind of, like, how society would, especially during the 70s, rather this like, throw away gay people, I mm -hmm. guess, is kind of how he's saying. And then, like, implying they're, like, incestuous mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And, like, with the uh, Madigan getting hit on by that bartender, kind of, like, the it's sense of being... Yes, yeah, so, mm -hmm. like, kind of, the, they depict him as sexual deviants yeah. and all that. I think another piece of commentary I guess that I honed in on a lot was their depiction of like the black athlete <laughs> uh, 
um, later in the movie, um, Bear becomes a boxer for the mafia or for the Italian mob. And it's interesting because the second that he accepts this job as a boxer, the very next scene you see is a white person in blackface dressed as like a clown. And then you have uh, white people, they're all dressed in really nice clothes. And like, there's a woman who's yelling, I'm going to go see the fight. I'm going to go see the fight. And so to me, the implication there was that by Bear becoming this boxer for the mob, what he's doing is basically lending his blackness to white entertainment. And that's kind of, he was kind of selling out his blackness in a way just to entertain the white people and generate money for them and be a source of entertainment for them. I feel like segues into the headless servant. Yeah, there's another character. He's a servant of the white mob and it's a black man, but he doesn't have a head. Mm -hmm. And so he fumbles around a lot, like knocks into things and the mob boss and all the other characters yell at him a lot. Like he's never doing anything right. And I thought it was interesting that they had this character where the white mob has taken his head and then at the same time is complaining that, oh, you never do anything right. And so <clears throat> it kind of speaks towards, I think, white society's tendency to create problems, like take opportunities away from black people, but then complain that when they don't know how to like when black people don't know how to do anything or like you limit the jobs that black people can get but then you complain that black people are lazy and they're on welfare but they don't have the opportunity to do that in the first place because of a problem that white people white society has created and is now complaining about the outcomes of it mm. something about um brother rabbit's character we thought was interesting like obviously he's like a trickster like bugs bunny and, you know, he tricks, um, he, like, tricks his way out of getting killed several times throughout the movie. But one thing about him I found respectable was, like, um, so his gang sells heroin. And, but he said, I don't want none of that age here. You only sell it downtown, which is where the white people live. And so it's kind of, it kind of says to his character um, that he's looking out for black people. Like, he might be a hustler and selling a drug dealer, but he's not going to drag down his own community, which says mm -hmm. a lot. Being, which is, again, another thing about, another common theme in black exploitation that, like, um, it's kind of camaraderie. With right, like, like you people. help out black people mm -hmm. and, like... Because even when they, like, first take over the gang, he says, well, we're going to keep all of this money within the black community. That way it's only helping the black people. Mm -hmm. So that kind of shows, like, the black camaraderie and, like, helping each other up. And, like, I feel like a common theme throughout black exploitation movies is, like, kind of that sense of community and, like, in a sense, I don't, I don't, I don't know if you can say racial uplift, but, like... Yeah, it's sort of, like, looking out for each other. Right, because they're not, like, like helping each yeah, other. because they're, they're not, not necessarily like, moving upward. Right, they're society. not better than each other, but they're just making sure they don't yeah. struggle or fall further down. All right. Did you like the movie? I did. I had, um, I <laughs> was nervous about it. I was like, I don't know. It looked kind of wild. I was like, I don't know where this is going. Yeah. And then you was like, you were like, I'm going to have nightmares. I was like, <laughs> ooh, maybe we shouldn't. But I wanted to do something different. Yeah. This was really different. It was super, and super different. So I'm really glad we watched it. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I would recommend watching it if you get the chances on it. We watched it on Amazon it's on Prime. Amazon Prime. Yeah, so. Yeah, I think it was entertaining. Like you said, the animation style is really unique. Mm -hmm. It's definitely, it's something to look at. I don't know if it's something pleasant to look at, but mm -hmm. it's definitely something to look at. And like we were saying, it's, it's shockingly self-aware, mm -hmm. let's say. Like, it's definitely, like, the director definitely knows what he's talking about. And you can tell that he had, <clears throat> like, specific things about society that he wanted to kind of draw attention to and I think he definitely accomplished that really really well okay yeah so that's our film review of Coonskin uh we hope you check it out thank you for watching all right I got the devil in me it's the man you see got the devil in me it's the man you see walk on niggas walk on Walk on, niggas, walk on. Shop it up, 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 shop it up,
The Pokemon. The octopus Pokemon, I think, is what oh, I'm thinking of. Oh, like, I know. Like yeah. the fish. The, like, big fish Yeah, thing. you don't have to show a picture. Oh, the those. Magikarp. Okay. I no, not the Magikarp. Right. There was a... There was a... Uh, <laughs> there was a... Octopus Pokemon where it's like it's an octopus. <laughs> you're gonna you have to show it you're gonna have to find it for I'm part. gonna have to find this for myself. No, I'm looking at it now, but okay, so <laughs> so you see the black